Welcome to Intermediate Blending, a follow-up series to Beginning to Blend. I'm Jorisi, your host for this series, just like the last. Now, let's delve in and begin. All right, this is the second time recording this. The first time I forgot to have the screencast keys turned on, so scrap that one, do it again. Last time we did the first method of animating, the one that was used all the way back when 3D models first came on the scene. And that was the point or vertex animation. Now we're moving forward to quite a lot of your model makers use today, which is the armatures. So let's go ahead and make our arm again. So we're going to go and we're going to create a cylinder, making sure it is 12 and the cap fill type is nothing. Let's move the entire thing over so the center point is way over here. And now let's rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, like so. And slide it over to the middle. And scale it out on the y-axis. That looks good to me. Now we need to break this up. We need to add at least five uh, edge loops. So we're going to go to Tools and down under Add, we're going to select Loop, Cut, and Slide and make five divisions like so. With those divisions now in place, we're going to begin moving them into their final positions. Not scaling them yet though, that comes next. So just move them into where they should be. And we're also not rotating them yet. So now that they are in position for the most part, we want to add in a couple more loop cuts closer to the actual joint here. These help to provide a bending brace or support so you're not manipulating more, than, more of the model than what you want to be. Now with these in place, we can begin scaling them to fit and rotating. So let's do that.
Let's add in one more down here. Excuse me. Uh. So now we've got the basic layout of our arm model. But, like before, we need to scale it in on the x-axis. So moving into top view with the 7 key on the numpad, we're wanting to flatten it out a bit. So let's grab these to start and just scale them in on the x, like so. And the same thing with these on the back. And now the entire thing needs to come in a bit on the X, but not much, just a little bit. So there we have something resembling an arm. So now we need to go about setting up our armature. And the armature is the internal skeleton of our, of our model. So to set up an armature, we need to tab back out to object mode. And over on the create tab on the left, if we go down all the way to other, we will see armature. Clicking this button puts in one bone, and this is what they look like. Zooming in on the bone, uh, so you can see what it looks like in a bit better detail. Every bone has a root and a tip. Usually you're not going to be worried with the root proper. It's always going to be the tip because that's where new extrusion or newly extruded bones start. So this is going to be the mid joint of our arm or the elbow. So with that, let's move the entire thing all the way over here. We're just going to grab it and move. And now to edit armatures, it's just like editing uh, models. Tab into edit mode. And you can see now it's changed. So let's go ahead and pull this down. And this is the first joint, which for us is going to be the shoulder here, which we don't really have a shoulder, but it, it's useful to have a starting point. And let's come over here on the left, I'm, I'm, on the right, I should say. There's a bone tab. We want to click that and we can name the bones so we don't get them confused. So this is going to be shoulder. And I'm going to say this is the right shoulder. So shoulder dash R. By labeling the 
shoulder as shoulder dash R. We are making it where we can easily determine which one we're working with. So say we had a model of a spider and we wanted to only move one of those legs. Using armatures, you, it, it's rather easy at, to do that, but it's also easy to get confused. And so that's why you will label them according to which half of the body you're looking at. So that's why we do that. Now back, back on the object data tab here on the right, if we come down to display, there's an, one thing that's called x-ray. We, we want to click on that. And now you can see the, the bone clearly, basically through the mesh. So let's extrude the tip here with the E key and slide it all the way to the elbow. Now, go to bone again and we're going to relabel this as elbow. Dash R. And now we can extrude it one more time. And relabel this wrist dash R. So we've got our armature laid out and properly labeled. So we can now hit the tab key to go back into object mode because we now need to assign our armature to our mesh. To do this, we're going to select the mesh and then select the armature and hit the control and P keys on the keyboard because we're parenting the uh, how do I say this properly the armature becomes the parent of the mesh and we want to allow the armature to deform the mesh with automatic weights. We're just going to let the armature itself determine where uh, the controlling points are. Because this is a simple model, we don't have to worry too much about other things being in the way. So we just click on with automatic weights. And it doesn't look like anything's happened. But if we go into pose mode, we can see that we can rotate it now. So take this one, rotate it on the x-axis, the entire thing moves. Grab this one, rotate it on the x-axis. Everything bends like it should. But I, I can hear you asking, well, how can we be sure that that's what did it? Well, if we tab back into object mode, 
and clear the parent with Alt P. Clear parent. And grab the joints. Go back into edit mode. I'm just going to move the animation playback all the way to the left. We can see it's here, but the mesh itself stays. And we can go into pose mode and clear the rotations using Alt-R. Just reset all the rotations for the pose mode. So we can see that it has to be parented. So let's go through that again. Select the mesh, select the armature, control P, automatic weights. Now, to actually build an animation, let's get the uh, right thing selected. We want this to be our resting pose. So let's select every all the bones and hit the I key. Location, rotation, scale. Now we can jump forward. I'm going to go to 50. And let's get things rotated to their full. So let's rotate this on the X axis up, like so. Same thing here. And let's also throw some Y rotation in while we're at it. Now, make sure all the joints are selected, or, or all the armature bones are selected. You can insert another location rotation scale keyframe, and all the way to the end. And this we're going to clear all the rotations, putting it back and insert one final location rotation scale. And now if we leave pose mode back into object and hit the play button on the animation uh, bar at the bottom, it moves through the frames of animation, just like we wanted it to. Much easier to animate this way, a little bit more time consuming on the front end getting the, everything set up, but it's better than the older way because this gives you more freedom to actually animate instead of having to painstakingly go through and make sure you've got every vertice that you want selected, actually selected. And if we don't want to see the bones, we can, can come back over here on the left and deselect x-ray. So now we're just seeing our mesh. And that's really all there is to uh, armature animation. Let's pull both side by side and get both of them going.
That's all for this session of Polygonal Art with Juracy. If you enjoyed what you saw, how about giving this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos from me. In the video description below, you'll find my Patreon link. Feel free to check it out. Now, on to the credits.